right everyone so in today's video what we're going to talk about again is another kind of crazy experiment that I did I some research on because if you all remember I was dealing with some crazy vine bore issues uh, about a month ago when I had all the squash and zucchini over there and they destroyed my entire crop of squash and zucchini and even my and even my spaghetti squash that I had over here. So I was dealing with that and I have found out that the birds are attacking my blackberries. So what I needed to do is come up with an idea or a strategy to one, deal with vine borers again, and two, deal with the birds again. So what I did is I did some research and I found a couple of ways I might be able to trick birds and deter vine borer moths. So, let's do it. Okay everyone, so before we go any further in this video, let's talk about you subscribing to this channel, sharing this video, liking the video, and checking me out on Facebook and Instagram. Just type in Down Home Backyard Gardening to either of those channels. Oh, Having said yeah. all that, let's get into the video. Okay, so right off the bat, let's talk about how we can deter birds from eating your strawberries, your blackberries, basically anything that's red, any kind of a fruit that is red, because again, red is an attractant in nature, or it's a warning. Either one of those is what red does in nature. Well, birds see red as both a warning and something to go investigate. If y'all remember in this video right here, I put up Chris, red Christmas ornaments all around the backyard to deter birds from eating my tomatoes when they turn red and so far a month three to four weeks after I've hung all these Christmas ornaments out here these red Christmas ornaments out here I have not lost a single tomato to birds I've lost one to pests but none to birds not sure if that's a win-win or a success but it's definitely not a failure so far but <laughs> I have seen birds cardinals specifically eating my red blackberries because as you know before blackberries actually turn black they're red like that right there now you might think that's a raspberry but it's not it's a blackberry and all of these areas right here had those on them but birds got a hold of them so how do we trick birds from eating your raspberries or say your strawberries, well, it's the exact same concept as the red Christmas ornaments. We're going to do this right here. Okay, so who saw that coming? What I did is I went and got rocks, just regular rocks, you know, that you'd find anywhere, and I spray painted them this bright red. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay these rocks all around my blackberry bushes that have the red blackberries on them and I'm gonna put these bigger rocks over here by my strawberries okay so the idea of the red rocks near your strawberries before you actually have strawberries is so the birds will have already come over investigated this red rock pecked at it realized this isn't fruit or a food source and they're gonna fly off so when your strawberries actually put on strawberries, it should not attract the birds back because they've already investigated this. So we're gonna give that a shot. Sit a couple big rocks right here around my one strawberry bush that has survived the heat so far here in Houston. The other one is struggling. So I'm not sure if that's gonna work or not, but for now, I'm gonna sit them right here. Okay, now, so for the blackberries, I'm also gonna set the rocks around the blackberry bushes just in a way to bring the birds in let them peck them and then they'll fly off now again everyone I don't have any clue if this is gonna work or not I don't see why it wouldn't work but this is an experiment just like with the majority of what I do here in this garden or what gardeners do in general is we're experimenting we're trying to figure out what works and what doesn't work and if it doesn't work well then let's modify whatever the experiment is and try to get it to work in a different way makes sense okay and just like that one experiment down now I really hope this does 
deter the birds from coming back over and over and eating more and more of my blackberries because I'm really tired of losing blackberries to the birds. But if it doesn't work, then we'll modify it and move on. Now, <laughs> let's get into an experiment a little, but I think it's going to work. So <laughs> let's go. What you doing, baby girl? Hmm. Good Jojo. Oh, big stretch, you goofball. Okay, so seriously, right off the bat, I know you're thinking, what in the world am I doing now? Well, let me explain. I had, if you all remember, and you've been following this channel for a while, you all remember a month ago, I had all those zucchini and squash plants over there in that bed, and they were doing great. Now let's look at that bed. So as you just saw, the bed is barren, right? Well, yes and no. Of course, the squash and zucchini plants aren't there anymore, but that entire bed has now been planted with beans. So hopefully in the next week, they'll start sprouting. And in the next month, they're going to be huge and we'll be rolling again with a summer crop. But in your springtime, you don't want to lose your squash and zucchini plants. I didn't want to lose them, but I lost every one of them to vine borers, these little these dirty little punks that come in and kill your squash, zucchini, uh, melon plants, basically. So what I wanna do is because it's now the, toward the end of June and I'm starting to want to, I'm starting to think about fall. I want to grow winter squashes, but I don't wanna lose them all again to vine borers. Yeah. Now I saw this on Facebook, I don't remember what page or what, um, I don't remember where on Facebook or I totally tell everyone, but someone came up with the idea of using mothballs as a deterrent to pests in your garden. Now that experiment reminded me of this. Back when I set up the fairy garden, and yes, this fairy garden doesn't look like it did two months ago. Everything is just going crazy overgrowing it. I mean, this right here is a watermelon vine. So my watermelons are doing great. When I put this house in right there, that is an open window. And what I did not want were a bunch of wasps to go in there and create a home. So last year, I put a bunch of mothballs inside that house to deter wasps and bees and i'm happy to say that there has been no wasps no bees no pests of any kind inside that house so mothballs work right so i can vouch that mothballs work to deter pests bees wasps those kind of so that got me thinking about what i saw on facebook and it was this right here now this is a bit of overkill but i want to really thoroughly test this because i don't want to lose any more squash or zucchini plants and if this works <laughs> oh yeah so what i did is i cut holes into the top of each of these containers put a bunch of mothballs in there filled it up three quarters way with water and sat it around this brand new zucchini plant i planted that plant four days ago and if there are any vine borer wasps, I'm sorry, vine borer moths around here, it sh they should be attracted to this plant. What we're gonna do right now is we're going to inspect this plant for any of the vine borer moth eggs, which look like this right here. Is, now again, this plant has been out here for four days surrounded by these containers full of mothballs. And I can tell you right now, I'm a foot away from this first con container and I can sorta smell the mothballs. It's not strong, it's not like overpowering, but it's enough to where I can smell it. So if a moth comes in to land on that plant, one, it should be deterred by the smell of the mothballs, and two, to be completely honest, it shouldn't even be able to smell that plant. This plant should be completely masked by the smell of the mothballs. So. You and me, right now, are going to inspect this plant to see if there are any eggs of the vine borer moth on it. Again, 
I have not checked this. This will be the first time in four days that I'm going to inspect this plant. Okay, again, I'm doing this just by myself, so bear with me with the camera. All right, so again, we are looking for those little red eggs. And if y'all don't know exactly what I'm looking, what we're looking for, and if y'all don't know exactly what we're looking for, check out the video that I just posted right here in the top corner of this video. Okay, so you all are witness along with me. As of now, there are no vine boar eggs on this zucchini plant. And I'm going to be completely honest, now that I'm right in here next to this plant, this mothball smell <clears throat> is something, the mothball smell is very powerful. So let's go ahead and put that back. Okay, so as we just saw, so far so good. I do not have a single vine borer egg on that zucchini plant. So, again, way too soon to say that this is a success, but we're on the right road because, again, they should have been able to smell that zucchini plant by now. Those moths are around. So I'm super excited to say that after four days of this plant being in the ground, there's not one egg on it yet. So I'm off to a good start. Hey everyone, so that is the video today. Again, let's do a recap. I have put red painted rocks over by the blackberry bushes. Again, to deter birds, or better yet, to trick birds into not coming back and eating my strawberries or my blackberries. But again, blackberries are red before they turn black. Just remember that. Honestly, I didn't know that until I started growing them. So we're all learning together, right? And then of course, the big experiment right now is for the mothball water container experiment. I don't know what we call this. Or how did I just get an ant on my ear? And a fire ant at that. Um, now I have bees flying around my head. It's too early for this. <laughs> okay, so if this container mothball water thing works, I am going, you are going to see so many containers like this all around this garden to deter pests. Drop a comment down below if y'all think this is going to work or if you just think I'm nuts. Um, <laughs> if you think I'm crazy, that's all good because we're experimenting, right? If this doesn't work, I'll try to come up with another way of helping deter the vine borer moth. I don't want that little punk around my garden, and I can't be out here to neem oil the whole world. I don't want to neem oil everything. Remember, organic gardening is when you're dealing with pests, you want to do a surgical strike on those pests. You don't want to carpet bomb the entire garden. You want to attack the pests that you see and then let nature take care of the rest. But with those moths, man, if they lay one egg, you're in trouble. So we'll see if this works. I will keep you all posted on this experiment. But um, so far, so good. All right, everybody. If you think this is a thought-provoking educational video, please share it. Please like it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Check me out on Facebook and Instagram. Just type in Down Home Backyard Gardening into those search boxes, and you'll find me there. And then as always, everyone, continue to shine bright and harvest hard. Bye.